Welcome everyone. Uh, this is my four hour chart on the Dow. So I've been buying dips here. So we saw a big swoon to the, to the downside in the open, only to come right on this zone. So if you are sizing up your support and resistance in a chart, then that, this is the kind of thing you need to have measured. Okay, so uh, in actual fact, if you look at the futures chart, let me see if I can grab this. Uh, this is the futures chart with um, the only the cash close, uh, uh, the cash session on it, and this low today. Notice it's a little bit too late; should have been prepped for this. But uh, this nine twenty five low was the cash low on Friday. So um, anyway, I started buying uh, just off of these lows and um, taking some off as we get up there. I uh, don't know if you, the only other, well, the other way you can do this is to your 60 minute chart up and get your Friday close on there because that is what we're seeing on the Friday close. So we closed underneath the Friday close and immediately higher as we came off of that um, Friday cash open. Okay, so you, and you can see the chart pattern there. There's all the support, there's all the resistance above us. So in theory, we could get up back up to 500 in theory, if, if that all pans out with um, Fed minutes due in 55 minutes. Uh, Mr. Chair Powell speaking at 7.30 our time. Okay, so that's the kind of prep I've done. This is, um, you can see all the uh, zones I'm looking at and the chart patterns, the breakouts and uh, just trying to assess um, you know, the uh, manage that trade as best I can. In the daily, now let's look at the daily, it's really interesting. Um, you can see we close above this resistance area on Monday, uh, sorry, yeah, m Monday, that's only Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm missing a day. Um, Struggled with that high yesterday. I was long into the close, had 100 pips on the books and, and gave a lot of it back. Um, but here we are, you know, just sitting on this Friday uh, North Farm payroll price. So, because it would not, that is not a sell signal yesterday. It's a lower close, but it's not a sell signal because because it didn't engulf Monday's price. So, like I said, in theory, uh, if we can hold this area here today into the close and pop back above that 380, 300, 380, we could start to make a, um, a move towards that gap. On the news front, we've got um, the prospect of Boeing getting their MAX planes back in the air. Uh, that still leaves a lot. Airlines, as we know, are uh, all sorts of issues with, with airlines, which we won't go into detail for now. Anyway, so the reason why I mention that is because Boeing is or was the largest component of, is it the largest, second largest component of this? Um, in the meantime, what we've got is Apple making new all time highs. So all this resistance, this was resistance up here. We closed above it on Friday, non-farm payroll day, pull back on Monday, and we are holding up very, very nicely above 350. Where can that go? If you are in this, uh, 357. 357 is the next target. Mike, that was, all to do, that was all to do with their, um, they announced yesterday they're going to make their own chips in-house. That's 
Oh right, are they? Right. Yeah, they're going to. They they. That's why. That's why it really um, surged forward yesterday. And and I think that that's a lot of the big push behind the movements on the Dow. They were saying that the the Nasdaq stocks have have been pushing it up, but the general direction of travel is downwards for the Dow at the moment. Yeah. Well, there's, let's have a look at some Dow stocks. Let's look at the NASDAQ before. Well, we're on the subject of the NASDAQ, so have a look at the NASDAQ. Um, so there's that zone we looked at, closed above it yesterday, and making uh, incredible, isn't it? All these 13, 14, 15, whatever it is, percent unemployed. And here we are with the NASDAQ at, um, you know, not only new, new highs, but well and truly above that 10,000 mark, incredible. I mean, look at Amazon, Amazon is just crazy. Yeah. It, it's, it's... Well, they, they, they all, Facebook and all, all of them started breaking out yesterday, didn't they? Yeah. I'm not sure, look at Amazon, because I think Amazon might have a problem with the, yeah. I think, I think what, what, what I understand has happened is that a lot of, retail investors have come into the market in the US. This is what I'm understanding is happening. That a lot of retail froth has been added to the market and that they're saying that um, that there were last week's last week the push up with the non farm was a lot to do with hedge funds covering short positions. But this week a lot of people are talking about retailers coming in retail investors coming into the market and this kind of I don't want to miss out factor. The so FOMO, people, fear of missing out. Yeah. So people pouring into the market with their savings, thinking it's all over. And I just feel personally that it could actually, it could actually start because there's a lot of, there's a lot of things I'm reading, which is saying things are going to get a lot worse. Because well, I, I think tr tr traditionally this is how runs like this end uh, when it gets as far as you know retailers piling in at the highs so this is when the um, institutions are distributing and getting out yeah i mean so, I've, I've taken everything personally i've taken everything into cash today right I, I feel that this is going to go one way which is down and i think if you look at the dow um which we're looking at now the, on the one hour chart there's a lot of red on there on the one hour chart i i my my feeling, I, I I hear exactly what you're saying, and and um, we're sort of climbing a wall of fear. We've done we've climbed walls of f fear before, mm. um, but I think it's going to get a little frothier before they finally blow it out. I think we're close to a, a top. Yeah, but um, you know, it's, there's 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 upside. I I agree with you. I do agree with you. There is upside, but if you look at the, my, my sense of where we've gone since Sunday, because when we were talking on Sunday, we were saying exactly the same thing, weren't we? That basically it's getting a bit choppy now. Mm. Amazon and Apple maybe have got some room to go, but what has happened, I think when you look at, certainly in the UK shares, what's happened since Sunday has been that your BA, for example, EasyJet have absolutely taken a nosedive. And, and I think that what you've got in the States is this pylon of retail investors that are propping prices up, but they may soon start to follow the UK. I mean, the FTSE's had a rough couple of days, as has the DAX. And I, I think, think that it's typical of the US. I, I think I find this absolutely, I've studied the US for a very, very long time now. And it's, they typically overdo everything. They, they oversell and they overbuy everything. Yeah, and they're piling it. And I think the thing is that, yeah, as you've just said, a lot. Of, I read something yesterday that was saying a lot of people come into the market. This is usually what happens at the end of a. a yeah. Market. You get the retail investors piling in, and and one of the analysts said this can this all that all that was missing was a lot of retail froth. Yeah. What does retail froth mean to you? I I, I call it. I I've used this. Um, theory over, over a long long period of time in fact i used it in october 87 in october 87 i sold 80 percent of my share portfolio two hours before the september 87 trade u.s trade figures came out <laughs> one, one of the th and so i was about three or four days before the blowout and one of the things that 
struck me about this market and I did the same in February 2000 I completely dumped my um, uh, internet stocks and one of the things that I, I like to do is if, if I sit in a cab and all the cab drivers go on about buying stocks you, you know it's just reached the end of the road yeah you know it's just too frothy and and whenever you, whenever all the uh, newspapers and magazines start telling you one thing you know that the opposite's true i remember um, a classic is i was doing a talk in a hotel in heathrow some years back i think it's about um must have been about 09 yeah 2009 and i hadn't gone long oil for months and i just sat for the first time that friday i bought i bought oil and on the way to this um conference i bought a copy of investor chronicle and they said don't touch oil don't go anywhere near oil. That's the first time I bought it for months. Um, so you just know when somebody talks about something that they, they're going to, you know, that, that um, it, it could be about to turn. I mean, this is the thing that what the thing that I am seeing is that the Dow. Okay, we're going to get the Fed speech at seven o'clock. If the if the Fed doesn't offer. If the Fed says, if the Fed takes on board that things appear to be getting better and doesn't sit there coating everything and saying, we're going to give you loads more money, then that could easily wobble the market. Yeah, but I, I've, I've listened to Chair Powell I, 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 for a few times recently, and he, he is, in the uppermost part of his, his mind and his thoughts are the... Um, the, the the workers the, the blue collar workers mm -hmm. he, he he's he's adamant that these are the people who have suffered in this virus and they are the people who are still suffering which they are so um and the, and we've seen in the uk in particular a heck of a lot of redundancy in fact we've seen a lot of uh, a whole tranche of retail redundancies today haven't we mm -hmm. yeah. so I, I i think he's gonna i think he's gonna do carry on saying what um drahi did um yeah, some years back, he's going to say whatever it takes. That's what he's saying up up till now, and I think he's going to carry on that theme. So I think that could. I, I still think the Dow is. So got then, what would happen is the Dow that could carry on the Dow pushing higher. It could, uh, and then eventually, what's going to happen is I should show you something. Where is it? Yeah, this is what I love. I, I've mentioned this before. I'm just going to bring this on. This is the, um, I haven't looked at this for a while and I'm a bit out of touch. This is the US sovereign debt, 26 trillion. <laughs> Last time I looked, this was 18 trillion. 26 trillion dollar debt. And this is their um, tax revenue, 3.2 trillion. Now Powell's also talked about this recently as well. So they are living way beyond their means, but all the central bank's attitude is, we have to do this, we have to just forget about that for now, we have to do what it takes, and then we have to pay it back when the, when the economy recovers. Mm, but there is also this factor that share prices are now, that there's no way that the companies can pay anything like a dividend that is gonna justify their, their share yeah. price. And that's that's what you're seeing. And this is I, I pulled up this one. I thought this is a really interesting chart. This is Rolls Royce, who just laid off um, I don't know three thousand employees. I, I'm not sure. Um, and it's gone right into the 89 day average, which is one of my favourite long term averages, and and just pop right back. Okay, it's on support. But if we start closing under this 350, then that that's that's toast. And then we're seeing that a lot. Um, I think what look at, IA, look at IAG. I mean, the UK. I think the UK is ahead of the US at the moment yeah. in terms of hitting the buffers. Yeah, let me just grab IAG. Yeah, and you can see this is the pink zone I had up here, and all these pink zones are in the uk are coming to effect but they're not in the us at the moment let me show you another couple of interesting stocks uh ones i've been talking about but, in you, the group. but you said but we did say on sunday there's nothing to sell you that you should be shorting iag um 
Yeah, that's right. But there are other stocks I am shorting. This is one of them. But I think I think the overall picture. I think, I think, whilst there may be nothing in that particular chart to suggest shorting, I think the overall picture at the moment is bearish. I think. But there, but there has been. Um, and let's just let me just go through some of the shorts I'm looking at. This is this is there are things uh, appearing in these charts yeah. now. Um, this one I've been shorting. I started shorting over here mm -hmm. um, in Dom, and we. So this is working out really well. I, this yeah. is what I, if I'm a bear raider, I want to get short as high as I possibly can mm -hmm. and sitting it as long as I can. So I started shorting up here in 363, 65, um, took some profit down here and then started shorting again once we saw this um, bear signal here on the fourth. So even, even on the, even after non-farm payrolls, um, Glowing numbers. It hasn't been affected by that so much. I know. And, I and so, the, so in our, but coming back to what you just said about, you know, things aren't showing up at the moment. Yet, yeah, well, they, they are. Uh, they, are, they are revealing themselves. Mm. Stop no, by stop. Domino, certainly. Domino, certainly. I think the thing in the. Look at, um, yeah, see, this one showed itself uh, yesterday. So, new high. That, that's the sell signal yesterday. So, Following on from what I said on Sunday, nothing was showing itself on Sunday, but it did, this one um, went short yesterday. And so the idea is once once they trigger short, you, uh, I ordinarily go about a third of the way into the um, bar. So this is still short all in my book at 305. Yeah, I was going to say because the last five, the last four, the last 20 minutes on the five minute chart, they were all buying, so people were buying into the close at 288.30. Yeah, so well, as far as I'm concerned, this sell signal still holds. So any push, in fact, I, any push back into that same sell signal, I think it's still just, if we see 325, when we get a little bounce in that at 325, I still think that's shortable. I would hold, I would offer out at 325 for oh, up, to three, up to three days. I think I totally agree. I don't think, I think that IAG will find its way back down to 220 because yeah. fundamentally nothing has changed. They're, no. they're in a dreadful state. They haven't got any planes in the air. There's still this quarantine. There's still, how do you social distance people on, on aircraft? Mm. So many reasons not to push that share up. Mm. Carnival is another story. I mean, all of these shares. So I think what the story I'm, I'm, I'm thinking is going on fundamentally at the moment is that there was a big push in the UK, in Germany and in the US into these um, cyclical stocks, into these leisure stocks, airlines, into, you know, leisure into all these areas other than Amazon and Apple, and that pushed higher. Now there's been some dread, uh, this dreadful report from the OECD saying the UK is gonna have this, this awful, UK is gonna be worse, but it actually isn't gonna be worse. It's gonna, France is gonna be the worst, but the whole of Europe is gonna have the worst recession we've ever had. And I think that people have taken a bit of stock and realized that these prices just cannot keep, keep yeah. shooting up. But in the States, something different isn't going on. So, I mean, it's coming right back to the charts, and this is another one that we talked about on uh, Sunday. This auto trade is great, and this one has played out really well. I had this um, marked up on Sunday. I was talking about, so this, my pink zone uh, ideal entry was 562, and we've hardly, I think we've only narrowly breached that. So that one's working out really well at the moment. I'm not interested, I'm, I'm, I don't, that you might see another test of that in the next day or two. Otherwise, I still think that um, that could e so easily come down to these lower levels, I think. For anyone who's listening, who's on IG though, just do watch your prices if you're shorting stuff on IG because IG's costs, because IG does take, I think it's 12 pounds to enter. There's an easy way around that though, uh, Jessica. Yeah. yeah. And, and instead of holding a, a daily funded bet, is to hold some of the longer contracts. 
Okay. So the you know the, the June. So hold the July or the August or the September contract. Well, on, you don't pay any on auto trader. On, on, on any of them, they should all have. Um, uh, I don't know if auto trader does, but most of them do have um, monthly that you can you can trade instead. It's a different price range, but it avoids okay. those. those and how does that work? How is, that's really helpful. So it's the rolling contracts that that charge the extra fees and, and costs, but the the contracts um, off off you sort of, well, slice through, minimize some of those fees. You're saying futures, yeah, the futures. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, for example, Auto Trader doesn't have that. So all I'm saying is just be careful of those costs because they can, because you can, they can just eat into any profit you make unless you've got a big position size. I see, you see a, a lot of the, this is next. And look how it's bumped. I had this pink zone marked up again. Uh, look how it's bumped into that pink zone. And the meat, that's, that's just, again, we've got all these sell signals yesterday, haven't we? Everything and, and that's that's retested the pink zone at the high today. That's why it's worth bidding out, uh, sort of offering out on these stocks. If you are going to short something, get as high as you possibly can. Mark your charts up with resistance levels and stick to those levels. Don't be tempted to get it. Don't be tempted to chase the market. Um, this is the this is where if you're if you are an investor um, and, you, and you put an order in the book rather than act, act as a day trader you know to some extent some um that that makes your life a lot easier if you just stick to your order and wait until the market comes and finds you yeah. um so but don't pretty much, but pretty much every uk chart has got this same story anything that's yeah. in retail or airlines easyjet iag associated british food all the ones we've been looking at the same story they bumped up on Friday and then they've gapped it down Monday, Tuesday and today. What we're seeing with, sorry, Monday was up, wasn't it? And Tuesday and today they've come back down again. But what we're seeing in the US is been this, I, I still think if you go back to the Dow and put the one hour chart on, Mike, and I think you can see a lot of red on there. And I just think there's... Yeah, but what, but, but what you can also see is um, where you do have green, they, the green is generally deeper than the red. Okay, you've got the a... last um, few days... Um, we, had, we had, Tuesday, we had these, you know, three hours of selling, but what did the, yeah. what did the, what did the US do? They, they just came in and bought it up. Exactly. And I'm seeing that, 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 I think that all I, all I, my point that I'm trying to make is that I think that underneath all of this, um, you know, there is a tendency to think, oh yes, everything's going to keep going up all right. You know, this, this rally is going to continue, but I think that there are signs that it is beginning to break. And well, I, 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 I've been, saying that ever, ever since, this, <laughs> ever since this virus kicked in, um, <laughs> my, my priority has been to work out where the next level um, of drops going to come from. Yeah, that's been my priority throughout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, to shorts because I think that there's so much, and everybody keeps saying the same thing in the press. What? How can you justify with all this terrible data coming out that, that stocks are at an all-time high? How can anyone justify it? It just doesn't make sense. I I think, and I that's a good point. But I think the the, fr the frame of mind that I think you have to adopt with these markets is you just you have to stick to the technicals and let and let them the technicals guide you because if you the more you try and work this out that can all get you in an awful lot of trouble if you try and rationalize the markets yeah, i've been there i've been there and done that but then you've um, also got the dividends that no yeah offering dividends and how can these shares justify the price is being an all-time high with no dividends being paid and let, let's look at this again let's okay let, let's Let's just really exaggerate the, the technicals for a moment. Well, for, let's, let's concentrate on the technicals. Look how we're coming up on, um, you know, we've had some huge, we've had a lot of uplifting up, up here. And look how the volume has been sagging. Mm -hmm. So if we get uh, a sell signal here this week, this, this could last a good few weeks and who knows, maybe even months. Um, if we end up with a pin bar like that under that trend line, 
on this low volume, we could see um, yeah, some that, that could really create quite an avalanche. But let's just at the moment it's still viable until we get that signal. Um, but um, yeah, that gap can stay open for as long as it likes. I've, I've seen gaps stay in place for years. Just because you've got a gap in the market doesn't mean to say it's going to get filled soon. So okay, so we've got uh, so we've got that on the volume on the MACD, which is a great little tool. If I extend this trend line across the MACD, you'll see um, the histogram is just hitting the underside of that, and moving at this market is so weak. The moving averages haven't even come back to the midline. So. Yeah, there's a lot of um, yeah. Th this is this is a crucial week for, um, for for the Dow for the U.S. markets. Powell's going to do his best to um, keep this propped up, but because yeah. uh, that's his job. Um, it's election year, um, but obviously the election suddenly all of a sudden sort of getting a bit messy, isn't it? With the uh, various polit political issues that are out there at the moment. Yeah, and, and, and the things that have been taking this up are the Nasdaq stocks, aren't they, really? Yeah. And and the minute that, the, and now the Nasdaq stocks are at an all-time high, I mean, Apple, for example, yes, they're making their own chips, but who, with all these redundancies and all this unemployment around, are they going to sell as many thousand pound phones? I Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I, I actually think iPhones are a rip-off. I yeah. think iPhone. I think iPhones have always been a ripoff. Now, when I first started buying computers, God, God knows when, I always had Apple computers. Um, they're always more expensive, but they always outlived PCs. PC hard disks always used to go and all the rest of it. And DOS was was a was was rubbish. Windows is rubbish. It's, it's, a, it's a heck. It's improved dramatically, but it used to be really poor. Um, but um, I, I think. Apple's long since got way ahead of itself, and I think uh, I think people are crazy paying that money for iPhones. Some of these um, smartphones are do exactly the same as, as iPhones. And 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 you know, you're not a person who's 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 had a massive hit to your income. You know, if you're such a, the amount of low income people that have iPhones, thousand pound phones. Yeah. You know, I can't. So, so there's so many reasons that you can. Also, I mean, the, the, what 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 a lot of people are suggesting, and the figures that keep coming up are between a five and ten percent correction, which would take us down by about two thousand seven hundred, say tops. So that would take us down to about the twenty, what the twenty five thousand mark. I, I, yeah, I mean, the the main support is there. So about twenty four thousand again, just above twenty five. But um, you know, twenty five is a, is a likely target given how markets love round numbers. But that's only a week ago that we were there. Yeah, wasn't it? Two weeks ago. I mean, we were hovering around twenty four thousand forever. Two weeks. Yeah. The other technical aspect of this is that um, on non farm payroll, uh, a lot of tra you know, it was such a surprise. A lot of traders missed out on that breakup. Mm hmm. I didn't do a five-minute chart. Um, so where's non-farm payroll? Uh, yeah, so a lot of traders have missed out on this twenty-six and a half thousand. So I think um, one of the what, you know, one of the first targets is going to get hit. Is that is that uh, breakup area? I think. Mm. Anyway, uh, the other thing I was going to look at while whilst on that weekly is let's just have a look at what happens when you do get sell signals. You know, what are the clues to the sell signals? This one here on October 18, again, we had we're going up on low volume. Um, and once we sell, we don't get much of an opportunity to get a pullback you go slight normally I would try and go as high into that bar as possible when you get a signal um, but that you literally get hardly any pullback on that you literally open and pretty much and start the decline um, but ordinarily on a sell signal 
Uh, here, here's a good example. Let's have a look back here. So we got a, a huge engulfing bar here on the um, last week in January 18. And although the initial move is down, it's uh, back up here on late Feb, you get a push back into that bar. You get a push back into um, middle of January middle of January's price so watch out for that just if so don't don't chase these mar markets and don't start thinking if you get a couple of green bars that this is um, if assuming that we get some some kind of sell-off uh, what I'll also be looking at is I'll be looking at the initial move to the downside I'll also be looking at any pullbacks um, you know three four five weeks later and then because once you get this so that's basically uh, a one to three wave reversal so let's let's assume for the moment we get a three wave reversal uh we've had a let's have a look at the wave count on this first of all so let's let's let me tidy all this up don't mind stripping this chart back okay so if let, let's say for, let's assume that we get some sort of sell this week. Um, so we get all, that we've had a one, two, three wave. Okay, so if this market is that bullish, and this is only, and we're just coming to the end of wave three, then in theory you could get a wave four pullback uh, and still away five into resistance and then you could potentially get a one two three wave pullback that's just um, or you can apply certain fib levels to that which I'll do that uh, next time we meet but um, that is that would be my sort of scenario for a modest pullback if we get an absolute real cracker of a, of a sell uh, bear in mind we've had a one two three four five wave dip to the downside uh you could argue we've had a one two three wave yeah this is potentially um so that's a five and three. The, the five and three doesn't work because five, uh, for a three-way correction to um, really take effect and conclude that we're in a bear market, the five and three-way move would have had to have been, in my book, underneath that price. But it, we weren't didn't have a five and three-way correction underneath that price. We we shot right back up into the um, into these levels. So. Big question, you know, are we, uh, let's have a vote on this, are we in a bull or a bear market? And I'm talking about 2020, not, not. Do you want us uh, to vote? <laughs> I'm going to have a, a no, poll, no, I, should, I, should, I should have set this up, shouldn't I? Are we in a bull or bear market? We can do, how do we do it? We have to, there's a way you can raise your hands on here, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Um, should we just type it into the chat? Just, just, just type in bear, bull or bear. Okay. Everybody's got to type in bull or bear. <laughs> Typical me. <laughs> bull, we should, you can, I'll take it as a bull. I'm not going to let you sit on the fence. Bull or bear, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're technically a bull still. Okay. Bull. Yeah, I, I, I think... Yeah, I've got some more votes to come in for... Okay. Just the anybody right. else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Type in. Get those fingers on the buttons. Bear. We've got a lot of bears going on. Um, any more? Any more votes? Uh, we've got who else? Two, three, four, five. There's eight people in the room. Who's not had to go? James. Come on, James. Tell us your answer. And Elizabeth. Doing a bit of audience participation here. <laughs> it's a bear market. Bear I think it's a bull. <laughs> it, could be a bear, it could be a bear 
bear, what do you call it? Bear, <laughs> what do you call it when you have a bear rally? A bear rally? Yeah, Elizabeth, I, I, and James, I... James Ball, okay. Getting heavy. Yeah, um... I, I, I think this is a bull market. You think it's a bull market? I think this is a bull market. Why do I think it's a bull market? Um, because of the power of this retracement. For, for me, as, a, as I said just a few moments ago, for this to be a bear market, uh, you would have to have stayed underneath that, at least one of these key areas. Mm. Uh, to come that far up, um is potentially i th what i'm seeing is i think what most people are saying is that they're looking at looking at this being um it was a u-shape or or a, a v-shape recovery well i think it's going to be a good old-fashioned cup and handle cup and handle yeah i don't i don't hear people talk about these these uh setups but anyway what i'm looking at in other words what i'm looking at is um like, like I said, for this to be, have such an aggressive push to the upside, uh, yeah, that, that is an incredible bullish response. So I, I have to call this a, a bull market. And I think overall, what we've got is, is a demand shock where we have a measured um, uh, issue in, in the market as opposed to a financial trauma that we had in 0708. I mean, to me, as I said on a few occasions, I think the issues that we had in the markets on 0708 was way worse than what we've had here. Mm -hmm. At least, you know, we know what we know why that happened, you know, it's, uh, and we know there is a degree to which that can be controlled. At some stage, there is going to be a vaccine. I'm not going to get into that. All I'm interested in the technicals. I only want to talk about the technicals. So. Uh, as if we can can come back and do a three wave pullback and sustain that trend line, um, this this could could go back to new highs and beyond. So let me just refine that. But part thing. of it, if we just just for a second, go on. Look at the story behind this. The story behind this. If, I mean, just look at the UK, which we all obviously know really well. That. So many people are being furloughed that actually, you know, everyone, ev nobody really knows anyone who's unemployed and skint at the moment. Mm -hmm. Where in previous recessions, we all knew hundreds of people that had lost their jobs and didn't have any money. We're hearing about people, redundancies beginning to happen now, aren't we? Because shops are about to open. And I think that as the economies reopen and people are expected to go back to work and their companies go, no, sorry, there is no job for you, that we're going to, I mean, they're estimating in the UK, we're going to have three and a half million redundancies in the hotel and restaurant sector. Yeah. And today, what was it, restaurant group, which we looked at the other day, have just closed, is 150 restaurants they're closing, 150? Frankie and Benny's and Wagamama's and those mm. brands. And you think, well, each of the Wagamama's employs, I don't know, 20, 30 people, I guess, you know? Yeah, but so, Jessica, that's, that's the economy, not the stock market. Yeah, I get that. But what I'm saying is that where is this optimism coming in to pile into all of these all of these companies? I think it's that people aren't feeling the pain. I think, um, well, yeah, let, 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 let's, let's go back, let's, let's sort of peel the onion back a, a, a yes. few layers. You know, why, why have we had this this response in the market after such a you know, huge, humongous drop? We've had this response because um, unlike previous recessions, the central banks are piling in um, and saddling themselves with incredible layers of debt, and they're happy to keep doing it. Yeah, we've just not seen that in the past. Which is um, my point. We're just high, we're masking. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, 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 I, I, I get your script. I, I really, I totally understand your script. And I think as um, soon as that starts to happen, as soon as, as soon. Yeah, as but I think the the markets are, although we, as we said, the US tends to overshoot. You can the markets are still very efficient at pricing um, pricing this all in. So um, you know, sticking to the um, the bottom line is we know at, at the moment we are in a bear, we are in a bull market. We know we're going to be in a bear market if we can't sustain um, 
know these key levels that so we've got major resistance up there major support down there and this is the sort of fire line to um, yeah I think that 25,000 is a fire line if we get under 25,000 and stay under there then I'll start calling it a bear market um, and so, so on, on sticking to technicals that that's my sort of bottom line on it um, yeah I, I think at the moment if we come down as far as uh, 24 and a half 25 and start closing higher then we need to um, start buying back so I mean look at us now even, even as we're speaking um, you know we've had I don't know how many pip drop we had today at the open was it 300 pip drop or something 250 300 pip drop and, and here we are um, uh, what were 170 we're about 250 pips off the lows in, in the cash station so I, I, I absolutely I've been sort of factoring in uh, yeah thinking very hard about the um, the job losses I think a lot of these job losses are going to be permanent I don't think you know, a lot of these jobs are going to take two three years to come back i think the airlines are going to take uh, they're, they're, even the airlines admit they're not going to be back to some numbers um that they had prior to the virus for a good 18 months two years maybe more so yeah it's going to be a hard fall road to get back to this but um as if the if if the central banks can keep up the liquidity in these markets um, then I think they, they, we can sustain the support levels. Uh, the real shock's going to come is, is if this uh, demand slump becomes a real financial catastrophe and um, we get uh, this uh, a horrible uh, deinflationary um, liquidity issue in the markets. That's that's when this could really start to, to crank lower. So I, I think, but if you're if you're a trader out there trying to make uh, investment decisions and make a living day trading, um, you just got to to let the market tell you what it wants to do. And and at the moment, the market is still telling us that um, there's there's juice to the upside. But when perhaps we're going to get to a situation quite soon where you know, some re dose of reality might set in and then we can start to really short and, and use some leverage uh, on the short side. And I've That's already exactly. started doing that over the last uh, couple of weeks on the UK, but not in the US. So if the US is going to turn as well, then um, likewise, I'm going to be reacting to that tune as well. Okay. The th well, the other thing that um, occurs to me as well is if we've got um and oil uh, the transport index is uh stumbling in the us let's have a look at that transport index this is the s p um etf transport index this this is i mean dow theory says that um you yeah, know the transport index is is one of the most crucial litmus tests so this is already uh, that's a weekly sorry let me go on daily so this transport index is ahead of the uh, US markets yeah and so it's not even gone up to that um, resistance level that resistance zone so you've got so the US is showing technical weakness because if that is um, according to the Dow theory if this continues lower then uh, the Dow is not sustainable or well, the, the US markets are not sustainable uh, let's have a look at the dollar I've been looking at very taking a long hard look at the gold as well let's have a look at gold um, I mean the initial shock in um, March this we had initial punch higher in February this came off in early March. Um, I think if if we get if this pushes up with a strong dollar, then that that really is a cocktail, a very very negative cocktail. 
So at the moment we've still got a, a weak dollar. If you see this dollar get back above that 95, 96 and 100, and the gold starts climbing up, that, that is, that's your fear factor. That's your fear really cranking up. So transports gold and dollar, get transports down and dollar and gold up, then put your hard hats on because it's going to really, really potentially tumble hard. That's my sort of litmus test in this market. Um, but the first litmus test is already beginning to work with that transport index. But the dollar's going down. So dollar's going down at the moment. Um, let's see if it reverse, reverses. Exactly. I mean, we're way, it is definitely a bull market. But that's, that's good, isn't it? The dollar goes down for the US. If the, the dollar, with, the, with that debt clock I've just shown you, if this dollar picks up with that level of sovereign debt, that's a killer for, for, um, for the US. Because if the thing, what the, um, the, the yield curve in the bond market is, a, again, one of the old traditional um, recession markers. Okay, yeah, uh, I'll come on to that machine in a minute. Um, if we, um, so I look, momentarily lost my thread. Yeah, the, the, the US needs a weak dollar. If you get um, the dollar punching up, then that, uh, that really, that, that, that shows is a potential liquidity problem in some of the key markets. And um, that pushes up the price of uh, maintaining their sovereign debt, and that creates a lot of issues. But right now, we've got a very weak dollar, which is obviously but, yeah, exactly. That's that. So the traditional relationship, the traditional divergent relationship, um, is in place, and the hence the reason one one of the reasons why the U.S. markets are still creeping up when that. Um, divergent relationship um if 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 this reverses and we see reversal signals in the dow we know that um that divergent relationship is is potentially going to reverse the whole uh, momentum in the um, u.s equity markets but uh, in the shock of um 0708 um Dollar and gold both pushed up very, very hard, which is great for in the UK and trading in the UK because then you just um, buy gold in, in a dollar account and then convert your convert your um, lovely pile of dollars back and you've got a double double whammy. Let's have a look at the pound because the pound's actually been very strong. I'm just looking at the um, pound Aussie. Right, that's the resistance. So that's a major resistance point. Um, so if that dollar is um, is going to punch up, that's going to be one of the first things you'll see. Any forex traders here? Have a look at this one. Because that's put this. Um, Dollar Aussie has uh, put in a reversal signal here. Excuse me a second, that will go off in a second. <laughs> what funny a noise. <laughs> that's, um, that's a how I, I live on three floors and um, the kitchen's way down, so people they send me signals when the meal's ready. So Mike's just got a really posh house, he's in. <laughs> Mike's just trying to say the butler's been calling him. <laughs> <laughs> we do all that butlers. This is what it means. Um, yeah, that's a buy signal. So, um, yeah, we had a buy. Actually, we had a buy signal here on Friday. New low immediately close higher, um, and now we've got a. Um, it's repeating. So I think this uh, pound Aussie dollar is uh, a good one for you, you forex guys. Let's have a look at some key U.S. stocks, and then um, we're coming up for Fed anyway. Um, announcements. Yeah, answering your question, Mazine. Um, um, 
Well, we've had North Far payroll last Friday and um, Fed today. So once we get, that's the two really crunch meetings. So there's no other real sort of crunch data coming up until we start to get to the next um, US earnings season. So if, in the meantime, let's have a look at some key bellwether stocks. But let's, let's start with a few in the Dow. Obviously, Boeing's had, Boeing reckons it's going to get its max plane in the air end of this month. So that could still give us a flurry into, um, we could still, we've got to still get back up to that 260. So we're above the 89 day average. So at the moment, there's no sell signal in that at the moment, unless, of course, we close down here. Um, buyers are been looking at, yeah, I, it's, so if you, if I am going to buy anything, it's going to be in safe in a relative um, safe haven such as um, the healthcare sector. I'm still long this one and holding on. Um, but let's have a look at some financials. I mean, here's Visa, still um, closing high, but very very vulnerable. So if we start losing a footing here. We start closing under that 200. Uh, that's going to be give us a clue. Uh, what do we got? We've got Microsoft still hold it well. Look at Microsoft. McDonald's. McDonald's is is uh, dodgy. Yes, yeah, all, all the fangs. All the fangs are up. All the consumer banks. Yeah, the banks took a beating yesterday, didn't they? Uh, that. Goldman Sachs has actually put a reversal signal in potentially. New high, close underneath, that's a reversal signal in Goldman's. That's telling. So that's, um, see how we close today. If we close any, any stage soon above 220, that's higher. American Airlines, okay, let's have a look at American Airlines. Uh, let's look at Caterpillar, let's look at some industrials. Caterpillar's holding up. So we've certainly got some um, some issues with some of these stocks at these at the US stocks at these highs as opposed to UK ones. Some of my favorite UK shorts are already well and truly um, in good short territory. Right, airlines, United. So uh, wow. That's so we so we gapped up at the moment we just closed the gap um if that can hold this 40 40 41 that's that's higher got some gaps down there um would i buy them no um that is attempting to hold if that closes above 37, if that closes above 38, that could hold. Otherwise, I, I, I just don't, if I'm going to short these stocks, I would, and this is okay, I would have shorted them at highs, not, um, so we had a pin bar up there on non-farm payroll, lower close on Monday, and that's, Ryanair is looking lower. Uh, what was the one you wanted me to look at? Uh, oh, just American Airlines, right. That weird American Airlines is not on my okay. Let me let me pull that one up. Why is not American Airlines not on my list? Jury's out. Um, if we pop back into this 20, well, I, if, huge push up. I would have. I tell you what, if we can come back to this trend line and hold, I would have thought at some stage in the, in the in the coming days and weeks we'll come back to fourteen or fifteen. If that holds, that could that could then go back up. Um, they just they're just horrible charts to me at the moment. Obviously, you've got a buy signal down here on the fourteenth of May, two days after they announced. Um, that uh, various states were going to open up. Mike, have a look at Cafe Pacific if you want to giggle. <laughs> Cafe Pacific. For some reason, you're 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 very quiet. Let me turn you up. 
Yeah, Cafe Pacific. Have a look right. at that. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at that one and then I'll wind up because we're about to get fed anyway. Whoa. So what happened with Cafe Pacific is that the government announced that it was going to take, it was going to buy up a lot, a big stake in, in them. And their price shot up by, I think it went up by, um, from, well, you can see where it went up. Yeah. And straight back down again <laughs> to close lower. That's the biggest sell signal you're ever going to see, isn't it? That red pile. Uh, yes, yes. So if you look at an example of a sell signal, it's right in front of you. So, yeah, you see, you see, you see a lot of fragility coming into this U.S. stocks. It's only the you know the major techs that are just flying and propping this market up. Exactly, which is what has been happening all the way along. But I think what's yeah. but I but I still there was a chart I saw yesterday that was showing the the retail investors were were um the the percentage of retail had shot up. I think it's fifty percent retail investors now that were pushing the volumes that were coming into the market. It was, it was a huge yeah. retail that was Yeah, I, I, I've seen that. I think there was somebody was talking about how some of these investors are borrowing to, to buy stocks. Yes. Um, so, wow. <laughs> I and mean, that's, just, that's just crazy. Yeah, and I think that this is, there, there's, there's also, I mean, there's so, so, so basically if that is the case, then what we're going to end up with is, you know, we, we, we could end up with quite a dramatic downturn because we certainly, I certainly seeing the start of that in the UK, aren't we? Oh, we're, we're, we're two, three days into it. Yeah. At least. If it carries on, if it carries on, we don't know if it will, but if it carries on, it might reverse. Mm. Can you just, you haven't done the DAX, Mike, just have a quick look at okay. the DAX. Yeah, I see. I had this resistance zone at, up there at the top. Um, we looked very fragile on Monday, and um, you know the drop on so that, the sell signal yesterday, and the pull back into that at seven fifty, seven sixty. Has seen that drop a couple of hundred pips. Well, we're, we're, at the very least, at the very least, we're due a pullback. Everything's got very extended. It's it's whenever I can't find stock U.S. stocks to buy, then there's a reason for that. Because there isn't any, um, so yeah, we're at the very, very least. I, this is what I was saying in the middle of February. I, I posted a chart of the DAX on the Friday, I think it was the thirteenth or fourteenth of February, saying we are at least due a pullback, and that was the that was the start. Yeah, up, up around about up up here about the fourteenth. Yeah, Friday the fourteenth. I posted it. I remember it. Here it is. It's Friday the fourteenth. Yeah, um, and we got the final sort of blow on Thursday the twentieth. Okay, well, let's just leave it there, guys, and um, yeah, let's just stay tuned on um, on these charts and and. Uh, Mike, yes, can you just quickly before the announcement? Can you just tell us what you think we, he's going to say and what what you think the reaction will be? Uh, I think Powell's going to repeat what he's been saying over the last few weeks. That whatever it takes. Bottom line, he's aware of um, the blue workers taking this on, taking the big hit, and they Congress is just waiting to push through another tranche of. Um, measures for uh, the less well off the, the blue collar workers so that uh that i think that that surely must be happening anytime soon i thought it's being delayed now the next lot of fiscal uh, um yeah know? that well they yeah. were they were trying to get another lot pushed through congress over the last week um which appears not to have been there yeah, Yet. I thought it has been delayed. And also Trump said this afternoon, the Nasdaq's at an all-time high, well done America, you, you beat us too. Yeah. So he sort of decided it's all over now, it doesn't need to do anything. Yeah, and it's an actual fact, if we just look while we're online, if we just look at what's happening on the Dow, we just got a horrible noise, you know, horrible violent spike. 
So what I would normally do is uh, I'll wait until we get a bit more data under our belt and then start to look for um, a way to trade that. But uh, it's best, quite often these things, it's best to trade the day after rather than the day itself. So would oh. you explain what, oh gosh, yes. And why so, is that happening then? Normally, what this is telling me is the initial direction was down. Hold on, I've got it now. Federal Reserve Statement. Fed holds rates near zero. Projections. Oh, there, there's nothing can be changed. The, the critical thing is, 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 is a press conference. Yeah. Uh, which is at starts in half an hour. Um, the, 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 real, the real difference, the real impact on this market is going to be where we are at about 7.45, 8 o'clock tonight. It's that that's that's when you'll see what the market thinks of it. Gosh, it's going crazy now, though, isn't it? This, this is yeah. I, I I think a lot of announcements have been incredibly well. Apart from non farm payroll last Friday, a lot of announcements have been really tame. This is normal. This is absolutely normal. I think uh, there's so many announcements have been really tame recently. But it's um, shifting, isn't it now? Yeah. It, 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 like I said, um, the the real litmus test for this market is going to be um, when Powell's speaking and how the market reacts to Powell's speech. But um, yeah, okay, okay. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm going to get off and um, just oh my wait. God, look at it now, Mike. Sorry to interrupt, but look at it now. It's shooting. It's got yeah. like a hundred pips. Yeah. Oh my goodness, look. What a shame we didn't all put a long on there a second ago. Well, that, that's it's this kind of volatility is incredible. Yeah, when the algorithms take control, this is really difficult to. Yeah, we're up from um, 57. It's going to go from 150 up to 350. It's well, that's done 200 pips in the last four seconds. Yeah. That's <laughs> like oil did when that's like oil did when it when it went down to a dollar a barrel. A barrel yeah. Negative. This looks like. Mm. Explode any second. So, but all of this movement right now is to do with the Fed announcement that the held rates in zero and C zero. Yeah, I don't understand why it's moving quite so well. Rates near zero and C zero yeah. rates through twenty twenty two. That's what Bloomberg is saying. Yeah. Well, I mean that that everybody knows that. <laughs> Pat Powell's been saying that for, for, but for is months. It the fact, but is it the fact that somebody thought? Is it the fact that people just wanted confirmation that that was going to happen? Oh, I, 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 I think. Um, <gasps> Look at it now. Yeah. It's Two hundred pips. Well, like I said, that was the <laughs> that that low was the um, Friday cash open. So they bought the light, uh, Friday cash open, and now they're winging up. Right, okay, I'm going to just uh, step aside and um, see what happens when Powell speaks and uh, take it from there. Okay. But, um, thanks, guys. Thanks, Mike. Bye.